What is going on, guys? Zip of Rage Quit TV casting the last match in this clan war, or the last show match, I should say, because this is game number one. Check Six Shadow versus 4K Warden. Of course, Check Six won the show, uh, clan war 3 0, but we played the entire clan war out because the last game can change the standings. 4K Warden spawning as the Red Terran and Check Six Shadow spawning as the Yellow Protoss. I haven't seen any of these games from Shadow. I've never seen this guy before, but he's got a lot of people in the chat, or at least just one in the chat, saying, Oh my god, this is my favorite Protoss. He is so good, and we'll get to see Check 6 Shadow play off. And 4K Warden showing that he is, or at least he has a clean keyboard, typing out the GG. And this uh, SCV is going to build a supply depot back here, and he's not walling off. It looked like he was thinking about walling off. He's like, wait, no, this is not a TVZ. This is a TVP, so I don't have to wall off. Places the Plattiva back here. Who knows why, but he does. Notice he doesn't place it on the very edge, because if he does, then a Voidra can come and pick it off for absolutely free. So generally, you normally don't see Tan players put things exactly on the edge. You just see him put them a few years away from the edge, just to be safe. Barracks is going down at 12. We'll see if he gets a gas at 13, or he goes for a gasless experience. Expansion. And we'll see what Check 6 Shadow does. He's at 13 supply now, so he should be getting his gas as soon as he has the money. Right now. There he goes, gets that gas. And of course, Warden gets his gas as well. As well, so it is going to be a pretty standard game. We do have the probe going out to scout that looks like after the pylon. And the SCV goes to scouts right around 15 supply. There's really nothing else. He's like, oh, I'm at 15 supply. I should go scout. And despite leaving the base after the probe, the SCV somehow knows the correct way to go and is going to see what Shadow is up to. We'll see the Cyber Next squad coming down, see the gateway, and start looking at this Chrono Boost energy. going to be like, well, you didn't Chrono Boost once on your Nexus when you could have. You had 50 energy, you should not be at 50. Unless you really want that Warp Gate out, which means you could be going for a 3 Gate Expand. And that's probably what Warden is thinking about right now. Of course, the 3 Gate Expand, you go Chrono Boost a lot on the side of Nexus, but get that Warp Gate out pretty quick and put pressure on so your 10 player, your opponent cannot expand when you can. The probe does come in, sees the Tech Lab coming out on that Barracks. And he will know Marauders are coming. And there goes the double kernel, one the seven next quarter, one on the gateway. Getting that stalker out as soon as possible. Is he going to get more gateways? There goes two gateways, so he is at three gates. And now the SCV is going to be coming in to... Build that command center at 22 supplies. So this is a pretty risky open, I would say. Kind of a juke, because generally when the opponent sees a tech lab on the barracks and you building a Marauder, you're going to go in the aggression. You're not going to be expanding behind this. So Warden doing a less optimized build and hopes his opponent reacts the wrong way. But keep in mind, he is doing that three gate expand, and uh, I believe this is going to be the right way to react about uh, what Warden is doing. He's going to be able to get a sentry count high end. Oh, no, he's only on one gas still. Oh, man. If he had taken that second gas, he'd be able to build a lot more sentries. And uh, he may be going for a three-gate uh, yeah, three gate timing. He may not be expanding. We'll see exactly what he... Okay, there goes the expansion. And I'm really curious what uh, Shadow is going to be doing since he hasn't taken that gas yet. He can't just mass those sentries. If he took this gas, let's say, two minutes ago, I, the general rule of thumb is you have three workers on gas. It's a little bit less, uh, more than 100 gas per minute, I believe. I think each gas is like 103, 102 per minute. Let's see. Let's go to this income station. 112, 128. So 120 gas per minute per gas, I could say. Averaging. And that's good to know. So you can see that would be like two centuries if he had got this gas around the time when uh, you normally would for a 3 get expand. The one probe does come in, gets a scout, sees the bunkers up, and uh, 
He's like, man, if I want to engage this, I need sentries. I don't have them, so I'm just going to come back and macro up. There goes that second gas. And another bunker. You can see that Warden still just on one gas of his own. And maybe he is going to go for this. He has a lot of stalkers. And oh man, those two Marauders could go down very quickly. Is he going to get... No, he's not going to kill it. He can't. He can't. Oh man, he gets back in that bunker just in the nick of time. And more Zealots are going to be coming out. Or maybe. There are three bunkers and they can be repaired because there's no sentries here to force field behind the bunkers. This is not looking good for Shadow right now if he wants to put aggression on and end the game. I don't think he'll be able to end it. He's just going to fall back. And uh, that is the correct call. Going to get the Robo facility so he can get some observers out just so Banshees don't come out and uh, ruin his day. He has got a lot of energy on one Nexus, not that much on this one. Kind of boosting a lot of probes out, but he's only building them one at a time. And uh, that is a little bit of a mistake. Why have these queued up if you're... Okay, there he goes. Now he's building some at that Nexus. So just these small mistakes. I'm not saying these players are bad at all. I'm just showing you that there's always room for improvement. This game is still new and no one can play a perfect game yet. Not even Nesty. Those logs do go down. And now we have Warden with quite a few units out. Will he be putting on the pressure? We have one single lone sentry. And the good thing about getting sentries, they don't cost minerals. So what he would have done is had a lot more gateways up if he had got sentries. Which would just give him more units overall. And uh, he would have been able to break these three bunkers no problem. Wooden does have a ghost, does have enough energy to EMP, but everything is splitting up from Shadow. He does see that with his probe on the watchtower. And some great force fields do go down, but there's not many zealots. But it looks like there's just so many stalkers. He can easily clean that up. 66 supply to 68 supply. The army tab looks like uh, Wooden is three ahead. The units tab, we have 40 to 40 of workers, so... Very even game. If anything, I'd give Warden a slight advantage, but it always gets just turned around when Colossus come out, and it goes into the Protoss advantage. We have another Observer coming out. He already has one. This will be the second one that Robo Bay is coming out, so he is going for Colossus. We do have plus one one coming out from sh from Shadow. Mine meanwhile, he is getting more gateways. The one pylon that was up here does get taken out, and the rocks going down. Warden will be taking his third base very soon. But the Observer does see this and sees double medevac, so Colossus may not be the right call. He'll be able to get Vikings out so, so quickly. I would not even go for Colossus. I would have canceled this Robo Bay right away. I'm like, oh no. That's a lot of Vikings, sir. Me no want. Doesn't have a scan down, so he doesn't know about that. That is just a blind Robo Bay. He's building uh, Vikings blindly before the Colossus come out. Warden. Just hard countering Shadow before Shadow even does it. And that's a very, very dangerous thing to do. Because if Warden doesn't go, uh, Shadow doesn't go Colossus, those Vikings are going to be a waste of food. But he doesn't cancel. He is getting Thermal Lance. He's going for it anyways. And Warden moving out with a lot of Marines and Marauders. And uh, Shadow is forced to pull back. If I was Shadow, I'd probably switch into Charge Lot Archon, killing that Robo Bay after I saw all of those Vikings coming out. That just spells disaster for any Colossus. And you can see Shadow trying to position his army. He just cannot and... Uh, this one probe still holds the watchtower. And one pylon is going to get taken out. That does not supply cap shadow. The gas now uh, doesn't get taken out. Scan does go down. Sees the army and does he see the Colossus? No, he doesn't. Colossus is just outside of range. A 
A lot more Zealots coming in. He is getting Blink, not Charge. And here we go. He's got to get some good force fields. The Zealots don't have Charge, so they're going to be way, way, way behind. And you can see the Stim gets away so easily. And now you're going to see a lot more Vikings come out. That Ghost does go down. But with these double star points, he is building three Vikings at once. And that is a lot of Vikings. He still hasn't taken his third base, though. I thought after he was taking out those rocks, he would be taking his third base. But uh, Shadow, way ahead of him on that level, has already got his third base. And now he is not building any Colossus. He is going for that Templar Archives to get some Templars out. Maybe go for Storm. And more and more Gateways. And I like what Shadow's doing. He is just getting a few Colossus, just two Colossus, saying, well, you have to build Vikings. And he is really hoping that Warden just builds too many Vikings. But it doesn't look like he's doing that. The Viking production has slowed down ever so slightly, switching back into Medivac and Vikings. So he doesn't have, like, 200 Vikings versus two Colossus, because that would just end poorly. Observer is going to see this one factory burn to the ground, and we have an engagement just now coming in. Going into this army tab, you can see 114 supply for the Terran player, 86 for Shadow. So the Terran player should be able to take this easy peasy, but you got to keep in mind that's a lot of Marines. And those two Colossus could do a lot of damage before they go down. Those Templars do not have Storm. But keep in mind that uh, Warden does not know that. He gets the feedback off on the Ghost. Some nice force fields go down, but those Zealots getting trapped behind. Now they're finally making their way. That Archon gets pushed to the front of the line. And now those Colossus come to show themselves and get taken out. Not too quickly. It looks like Shadow pulling this one. I don't even know how he won that, to be honest. But yeah, Shadow defending this so well. Doesn't even lose a single Colossus. We do have the third base now coming up for the Warden. But man, did that fight go poorly for him. You can see the army supply completely tilted. And uh, that's what I was talking about. When the classes come out, it is so good. Just look how cost-efficient Shadow is being. 8,300 minerals and gas lost for the Terran player. 3,700 lost for Shadow. Going to the upgrade 0-0 zero, zero versus 2-2. Uh, two, two. So that is most likely the deciding factor. Shadow getting all those upgrades. You can just see those upgrades coming in and just how much they help. And of course, the feedback just put icing on the cake, stopping the ghost from the EMP. And now Shadow is starting to move. Uh, he's trying to think what he wants to do. Going to send a few zealots at first to lead the way. He wants to get any uh, scouting he can. And well, he has observers, so he should know what the army is. Maybe he's trying to pull the whole army out of position with these three zealots so he can go in through the front door. And this army is getting pulled out of position. Is he going to come in? Is he going to? No, it doesn't look like it. It's just a bad day to be a zealot. Does have four Templars out. Storm now just finishing. And that, oh man. As long as he can get the storms off and doesn't get feedback, uh, uh, EMP'd. He's going to do just fine. A big storm goes off. You can see a lot of units go in the red already. Those medevacs have a lot of healing to do. And all oh, gets some feedbacks off on those ghosts. Snipe trying to go down. And uh, feedbacks do happen. Here we go. The engagement is happening. A lot of those units were injured from the previous storm. There's a lot of Vikings out, but not many Colossus. So many Archons now just tearing through. There goes the GG. Shadow taking the first game off of Warden. We'll see the next game. Take care. Cure later.